Um, okay, so this has been a wide-ranging discussion for now, but essentially uh, the cost, the manufacturing, or rather the, the, the purchasing cost of memory modules, NAND flash, that kind of thing, it's going through the roof. And um, this is having a severe impact on um, you know, the potential future cost of anything that uses memory, right? Uh, so if you want to buy DDR5 memory for your new PC build, well, now it's seemingly like at least twice the cost of what it was in the past. Um, Memory has always been pretty, you know, um, dynamically priced. It can vary dr uh, dramatically, but this is deeply worrying. We've also got the situation now where it's seemingly affecting all different types of memory. So we've got the likes of GPU manufacturer Power Color, color saying, hey, you know, this Black Friday, it may be your last chance to buy a GPU at a good price. Um, now, on the one hand, Power Color want to sell AMD GPUs, right? So this is a pretty good way to get people to, to jump on right now. Um, on the flip side, obviously there is an issue here, right, Oliver, that could potentially affect the prices of these, um, pretty much anything with memory going forward. Yeah, Rich, and I've seen some crazy stories out there as well about potentially uh, the supply of low-end GPUs drying up. I'm not sure I necessarily believe that, but there's certainly been a lot mm. of doom and gloom about this increase in DRAM pricing. The basic problem is that obviously we've seen this huge spike in AI demand, right? That's broadly speaking, that's going into server products, whether those are GPUs, whether those are CPUs, all kinds of different products, right, um, in this space. And that has effects on server DRAM, right? It also has impacts on LPDDR5X supplies because NVIDIA's new servers use LPDDR5X, which is a new kind of pressure that puts wow. constraints on smartphones directly and other LPDDR5 products. Mm -hmm. Um, and HBM, obviously, high bandwidth memory, which is used for some of these high-end GPUs. None of those are GDDR products. But the problem is, is that a lot of this stuff is kind of fungible at the manufacturing level. And so DRAM suppliers have allocated more of their wafer capacity to these kinds of server memory products that basically puts pressure on GDDR supplies, GDDR6 and GDDR7, which are used for GPU products, right? It's not necessarily that any of these device categories that might be impacted, you know, GPUs, smartphones, laptops, whatever, it's not necessarily that they're being driven up hugely in terms of demand, like we saw in 2020, or even like we saw in G with GPUs just specifically in like 2017, with obviously the crypto boom at that time, mm. um, driving up prices because people were using it to mine Ethereum and other GPU coins. That's not occurring here, it's just basically a, a, a different surge in demand, different products putting different kinds of pressures um, on, on the GPUs here. Um, so yeah, I think we've seen so far over the past few months, GDDR6 increasing in particular by about 40% or 50% um, in price with future price increases rumored uh, there as well. So I think that's a serious concern there. So yeah, Rich, that's the situation at the moment with GPU prices. It's not a very good situation, especially when you consider that depending on the GPU product, you could be looking at, at least at, at present, you know, 10% to 25%, somewhere in that range of the device's cost, the device's bill of materials costs, I should say, being consumed by graphics memory prices. So that could potentially have a large impact, and especially when you're looking at some of these lower margin products, these low-end consumer GPU products in particular, there's not much room to give on those products. They will really need to increase those prices, I suspect, if these prices continue to go up for GDDR products, uh, which should be reflected at least uh, pretty shortly in the retail chain for GPUs. That would be a serious concern. Mm -hmm. Interesting. Um, yeah, I mean, from my perspective, it's a really simple question um, as we enter sort of the Black Friday period, although it's Black Friday actually seems to be like Black November at this point. As soon as you enter November, everybody's like, seemingly wants you to buy lots of stuff um should you buy a gpu now i think is uh is a, is a really decent question and i think i think there are good reasons to first of all all the indications are that we're not going to be seeing um a super refresh for um uh, blackwell 50 series we're not going to be seeing that anytime soon um which basically means, well, we've got to take a look at the products that are there today, whether it's RDNA 4 or um, Blackwell. Um, Blackwell, mm. it's actually at MSRP now, and it's the same with the AMD stuff. In fact, you know, when you're looking at certain products like um, 5070, for example, there are deals that are under MSRP. Uh, which ones do you recommend that, or do I recommend? Well, if let's let's sort of go like bottom up. Um, first of all, 
on the cheaper end of the stack, you know, where you've got your like 5060s and 9060s, uh, I still can't recommend any 8 gigabyte product. Um, so if you are cash strapped, well, actually, Intel B580, B570, there are some amazing deals now, like in the $200 range for one of those GPUs. It's There are problems with Intel, you know, in terms of driver efficiency. Um, uh, often it seems that games launch with mysteriously low performance based on uh, some of the graphing that I see on um, PC game, games hardware or computer base. But, you know, $200 for a 10 or 12 gigabyte GPU, that's, that's pretty good. That's pretty good. I don't know what you think about that, Alex, but, you know, it, it solves one of the main problems that are facing entry-level GPUs, which is the lack of VRAM. Right. And, um, yeah, so, you know, those are well worth a look. I can't recommend 5068 gigs unless you're playing older games, in mm -hmm. which case it's actually pretty good because it's, you know, it's as fast as a 2080 Ti, which is pretty good even still. Um, if we move up into the sort of um, the next et echelon above, if the price is right, the 9060 XT is really good. There have been some great deals on that. I think I saw like um, uh, £300 for that or two, $299 even possibly. Um, that's a great deal for that sort of PS5 Pro level of performance that those yeah. products offer. And you're getting 60 gigs of memory. 5060 Ti, again, you know, um, 16 gig model only. I, I'd recommend for that. Um, but you are, again, getting um, equivalent PS5 Pro GPU performance, but you're also getting the NVIDIA feature set. You're getting DLSS, you're getting Transformer Model, you're getting MFG. You can run past facing on that class of GPU. You can run RT Overdrive at 1440p, um, optimized settings, Cyberpunk um, with RT optimized settings, flies with MFG. It's like pretty awesome. Um, 5070... I, I offers proportionately better value than the 5060 Ti in terms of performance, but it does only have 12 gigs of memory, so you need to kind of figure out which one is best for you. That's, mm -hmm. that's an interesting one. 5070, I think the whole 4090 performance claim um, basically left a cloud over that product. But I think it's it's all right. I think it's pretty good. It's quite a lot faster than the 5060 Ti, but it does have that memory deficiency. I guess if you could afford it, the 5070 Ti is you know um, not that far off, like 4080, 5080 performance. When you overclock it, you get 16 gigs of memory with it. It's kind of like a, a sweet spot, if you like. Mm -hmm. um, so those are the ones that, you know, the budget conscious gamer, I think, is is probably should be worth looking at. 9070, 9070 XT, probably the XT you should be looking at there um, if you want uh, an AMD card. Um, I'm just a bit worried about AMD because, you know, um, but they're sending out the message that, um, hey, um, we've actually got a lower product life cycle than NVIDIA. Uh, you know, yes. they're being, you know, pretty unequivocal about that now. And um, the thing that concerns me about um, RDNA 4 is that we know RDNA 5 is coming and we know, thanks to Mark Cerny, just how much of a, a generational leap it's going to be over what they're doing now at the architectural level. Um, so, yeah, but they are still great value GPUs. What can I say? Um, I'd say it's a good time to buy now because I don't see anything better coming along. But, you know, it does seem to be the case that there is going to be um, significant price pressures. We've got this weird situation now where AMD and NVIDIA have managed to, you know, give the market the stock that it desperately needed earlier on. We're down to MSRPs or even lower in some cases. And, you know, maybe it is a good time to buy. What do you think, Alex? I, th I don't like uh, telling consumers now is the time to buy. I feel like a shill when I say that. Yeah, um, I, but I get what you're it's saying. not a great feeling. But you, this is usually the time of year when people would do those kind of things anyway. <laughs> yes. So it's not that it's not the worst thing if I say it, um, and that's fine. Especially if there are going to be good deals around this time, uh, as they probably won't be there in the next. I mean, you, market trajectory seems to point, as Oliver said, that this will not be the case necessarily in a couple months from now. Um, so this may be the last hurrah for a lot of people. And like uh, like Rich said, I do think looking at 12 and 16 gigabyte GPUs is mainly your highest priority. Um, 
I would, uh, all the GPUs Rich said were pretty great, I would also say are pretty great. Um, I, I don't have a 5070. I do have a 4070 Super, though, which will be most similar yeah. in performance. Um, so I've had experience with that, and I've, I haven't really had problems with it at 1440p, at least for most of the time. There's a couple of settings in games with regards to 12 gigabytes. Sometimes you have to be a little bit more careful into if there's some random ultra high end texture streaming setting that doesn't really affect visuals. Some games have that, uh, so that's one thing to work, look out for. Uh, like Rich said, though, RDNA 4 is also good. The only issue is that it may be a longevity question. And also, we did see that interview with Mark's, not interview, but that little discussion with Mark Sermi re regarding the Project Amethyst update, which basically says, actually, you know, what you got right now isn't that great in comparison to what we're going to have in the future. Whereas, you know, the NVIDIA side... Uh, their backwards compatibility for technology has been pretty great, barring multi-frame generation. So, you know, it's it's hard to see. That obviously, NVIDIA is going to have a product that is somehow much better next time around than Blackwell. But whether or not it's backwards compatible is also another question. So, uh, yeah, like Rich said... I don't like saying buy now, but this may be the most reasonable time to buy if you were looking. And if you need a new GPU, if you don't, then you know, it stands then to reason. Don't. Yeah, I mean, 40 series, even 30 series are still great cards. I mean, that's mm -hmm. the thing. Um, <laughs> yeah, it's it's just so tricky at the moment. The reason I'd say it's a pretty good reason to buy now is that I just can't see anything better coming along in like the next year, unless there's like some major advancement you know, unless RDNA five does come along much sooner than expected, I guess that's 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 kind of an interesting point. We don't really know on mm -hmm. that side. On the Nvidia side, I'm you know, I can't see anything happening there. I think you know, there's a really interesting discussion to be had. Thinking back to the fifty seventy, there were two reasons why it didn't review well. Right, number one. Um, there were claims that it would perform as well as a forty ninety, which you know, come on, that's come on now. That's that just wasn't. It was <laughs> that so, was not cool. It was so easy to disprove. <laughs> and secondly, the other criticism was it's you know it's not that much better than a forty seventy super, uh, which again is a valid criticism. But it now seems to be you know certainly when um, uh, Steam Machine is coming out to much fanfare and actually the the hardware that's being used is very very old. It just does seem to be the case that the pace of innovation in terms of performance improvements is slowing all the way down. So we are kind of like, you know, looking at today's technology rather than looking ahead to what's coming tomorrow as being fantastically better. And, you know, if only we wait. That's that's the thing there. So, yeah, I mean, you could, it's always tricky to, to sort of try to predict the future. Um, but in this case, it's, it's not looking great, is it? Um, any final thoughts, Oliver? No, just to say that obviously I agree with everything that's been set up to this point about the viability of purchasing a GPU sooner rather than later. But I'd also specify here that the Blackwell refresh, the super series is particularly problematic because what's special about the super series well, they're increasing VRAM and everything. Yeah, which is, <laughs> so that's, yeah, absolutely. It yeah. would solve the whole issue of whether a 5070 class product is, is worth considering, you know, because the, probably the only major problem with it is the fact that it's got 12 gigs of memory when there's a cheaper, lesser product that actually has 16. There's a, there's, it, there's a lot of weirdness going on there, that's for sure. My point there is that if that's the point they're differentiating on and VRAM prices are being driven up, that could be a very problematic thing for that line of products, right? If those products yes. do release into a market where GDDR7 is very expensive, that's going to have a, a potentially a big uh, pricing impact on those cards. So you're not out of the oh. woods there necessarily with that line of cards. So I think that's wow. a serious concern. And I also have a concern here about buying, you know, I think you should go out and buy any consumer product that uses a lot of memory like laptops, uh, game right. consoles, anything, GPUs, whatever, because this is going to be a concern for those products, especially in the lower end uh, spectrum of things. I think it might become a lot harder, for instance, for Sony to offer you your $400 PlayStation 5 mm. discount next year. I don't think that's going to happen. I kind of wonder what they might do to the baseline price of that console in this environment. So there are a lot of products mm. to consider buying with this uh, supply constraint. I think ultimately, you know, um, the Blackwell products on RDNA 4, I mean, they're, they're pretty good, right? 
and I, I mean, they've certainly got plenty to recommend them. It's not as if there's bad products out there. There's just been, um, you know, pricing issues that have made things extremely difficult to recommend. And the cards are now at MSRP, um, as I said, or even yeah. below. So, you know, there, there is much to, to, to consider in, a, in terms of the purchasing decision. 